Kia ora from New Zealand, everyone. I'm Donna Louise, and welcome to my YouTube channel for the love of puzzles. Today, we're doing another new to me brand, Mud Puppy. I've not done one of their jigsaw puzzles before. Comes in this cute little box, very small box, 500 pieces. This one's called Hungry Plants, Fly Traps, and Other Carnivorous Plants. On the back, there is another smaller version of the jigsaw puzzle, and it says that it, the illustration is by Natasha Durley. Now, I'm not familiar with Mud Puppy or their puzzles. Um, this is the first to me. I don't know if you have experience with Mud Puppy. If so, leave your comments below. Let me know what you think, but let's just dive right in. Let me change my camera angle. We'll get a closer look at the box and the pieces inside. So let's have a closer look at the box. The box is rather small. I mean, look at it next to my hands. And it is just 500 pieces. The image maybe is a bit small, but perhaps this will be an easier image uh, to build. On the side, it just has, you know, the name Hungry Plants, Fly Traps, and Other Carnivorous Plants. There you go, pretty much the same on all four sides. On the back, there's another smaller image of the puzzle. Oh, and look, the size of the pieces, that looks pretty big. Now, I've never done Mud Puppy, so I'm not familiar. I wonder if all their puzzles have bigger sizes. It does say illustration by Natasha Durley. And yeah, just designed copyright for Mud Puppy. Very nice. And it's a square, 51 by 51 centimeters. Oh, nice, that'll be interesting. So let's take this lid off. I do like the box. It feels like a good quality box. Oh, those are big pieces. Oh, look, there's a poster. There's a poster. It's actually smaller than the box. So it is quite small. By the way, this is a sticker, so you could remove it. Um, like I can't make out the writing because it's so small, but I think for this image, I'll be able to build it with what I have. Although if you're going to include the poster, it would be nice like if this was twice the size to so like, you know, replicate that, make that a bigger square, that would have been nice because you can always fold it and put it in the bottom of the box. On the back, it says share on social, tag photos of your finished masterpiece on Instagram and Facebook, hashtag mud puppy puzzle at Mud Puppy Kids. Um, so are these puzzles mostly um, with kids in mind, I wonder? There you go. I'm just curious. So we have a plastic bag. Let me open this up. These pieces look so big. Oh, I think I've decided that I really do enjoy puzzles with larger size pieces. I don't know if it's age or eyesight. I wear contacts, so you don't see me with my glasses. But yeah, now let's see. These are nice pieces. It may be the slightest shine, not really a nice matte finish. Nice pieces, interesting shapes, interesting prong shapes, I can tell right away. Now let's, are they all two prongs? Hopefully not. There's some border pieces. The prongs are definitely interesting. Um, it's a paper backing. Pretty good thickness, but are they all the two prong standard pieces? Oh goodness, there's gotta be, I think they are. Oh, interesting. Just going through, besides like the border pieces, is this really all two prong standard? I don't see a single other cut. Wow, okay. Well, we'll find out soon enough, but I think they're all two stand prong pieces. What's interesting is they look like they have a direction. So if you ask me, you see, I bet you, I bet you they go like that. They look like you can figure out a direction. And maybe because they're bigger pieces and they're directional, it's easier to build. But overall, I do enjoy a puzzle that has a variety of pieces. Let's hope there's not a lot of false fits because there's only two types of pieces. And let's hope, are they all the same cut actually? No, that, that looks a little different. Hopefully, ooh, well now, hmm, okay. I'm a little skeptical, but we'll give it a shot. Let me know if you have experience with Mud Puppy jigsaw puzzles. Are their pieces always so big? And are they only just two prong pieces? I will admit the colors are beautiful. The colors are absolutely beautiful, nice and matte. This is going to be a lovely image when it's done. I just hope the puzzling experience is enjoyable as well. 
Oh, and you see I can read the writing. During the time lapse, I'll pick out a few of the plants and we'll discuss them. I don't think I've seen a carnivorous plant in person. I've been to various botanical gardens and I could well have seen one, but nothing comes to mind as a memory as having done so. Yeah, well, there you go. 500 pieces, nice big chunky pieces, but all the same cut. Yeah, but they feel directional. Like if I had to guess, they're directional. Like I don't think they're gonna, they're either gonna be that way or that way, you know what I mean. Yeah, so let me know your experience with mud puppy puzzles, if you enjoy them or not. Are they always just two prong standard cut pieces? Um, and are they always such large pieces in all their jigsaw puzzles? Oh, there you go. So for the love of puzzles, let's get to piecing together this carnivorous plant jigsaw puzzle. The Nepanthes loi, hopefully I've pronounced that correctly, or Lowe's pitcher plant, is a tropical pitcher plant endemic to Borneo. It is named after Hugh Lowe, who discovered it on Mount Kinabalu. Now this species is perhaps the most unusual of its kind, being characterized by its strongly constricted upper pitchers, which bear a greatly reduced opening and a reflex lid with numerous bristles on its lower surface. It is known to catch very few prey compared to other Nepanthes. While pitcher plants are more famous for being deadly pitfall traps that drown insects, oh my god, that's terrible, um, Lowe's pitcher plant is different from the others because it is one of the three species of Nepanthes to have special adaptations to capturing vertebrate feces, oh my goodness, droppings from birds and shrews. The Lowe's pitcher plant especially consumes that of the mountain tree shoe, shrew. Sorry, I'm a little gobsmacked here because it went from eating bugs to eating poop. Okay, um, this particular species may have moved away from a solely or primarily carnivorous nature and adapted to catching the droppings of birds. Well, there you go. You learn something new every day. The dewy pine, which is commonly known as the Portuguese sundew, is similar to the related genus Drosera, the sundews. Um, it is native to the Western Mediterranean region, through most of Portugal, Southwest Spain, and Northern Morocco, and is one of the few carnivorous plants to grow in dry soil. It grows mainly in clearings of shrub, pine forests, evergreen forests. The plant has a distinct sweet aroma which attracts the insects upon which it preys. Oh, lures them in. When insects land on the leaves, they find themselves stuck oh, to the mucilage secreted by the stalked glands on the leaves. The more the insect struggles, the more ensnared they become, ultimately dying of suffocation or exhaustion. Oh, that's terrible. The plant then secretes enzymes which dissolve the insects and release the nutrients, which are then absorbed by the plant. The plant uses these nutrients to supplement the nutrient-poor soil in which it grows. Wow, okay. Oh, I know it sounds terrible, but it's, it's nature at work. It's, so I get it, I understand, but okay. Ooh, interesting. Let's keep going with the Venus flytrap. It's native to subtropical wetlands on the east coast of the United States, like in North Carolina and South Carolina. It catches its prey, mainly insects and arachnids, with a trapping structure formed by the terminal portion of each of the plant's leaves. And that's triggered by tiny hairs, like they're called trigger hairs or sensitive hairs that they have on their inner surfaces. When an insect or spider crawling along the leaves contacts a hair, the trap prepares to close, snapping shut only if another contact occurs within approximately 20 seconds of the first strike. Triggers may occur within a tenth of a second of contact. The requirement of redundant triggering in this mechanism serves as a safeguard against wasting energy by trapping objects with no nutritional value. So the plant will only begin digestion after five more stimuli to ensure it has caught a live bug worth consuming. So once it's triggered multiple little 
pitter-patter feet. It snaps shut, but then it waits to make sure there's more. The bug is like wriggling around in there and it goes, oh yeah, mm-hmm, got me a live one. Wow. It's, it's so smart though, when you think about it. It's so smart and evolved. Drosula prolifera, commonly known as the trailing sundew, is a species of Drosula of sundews, which are found in Queensland, Australia. It is one of the largest genera of carnivorous plants with at least 194 species. They lure, capture, and digest insects using stalked mucilaginous glands covering their leaf surfaces. The insects are used to supplement the poor mineral nutrition of the soil in which the plants grow. Various species, which vary greatly in size and form, are native to every continent except one, Antarctica. Next to the trailing sundew, it looks like a meaner version of the Venus flytrap. It's called the sawtooth Venus flytrap. Wow. It has rows of highly serrated saw-like teeth that grace the periphery of its traps. It grows sturdily upright with nice large traps and develops beautiful red coloration on the interior of these traps. I wonder if that helps attract the bugs. Maybe. Sawtooth also reproduces more easily than other fly traps. So they make more baby fly traps than usual. Oh wow, well if the Venus fly trap didn't scare you, here comes the sawtooth Venus fly trap. was lots of fun to build. It really didn't take me that long. I don't time myself now unless it's like a large jigsaw puzzle or speed run. I just don't want to deal with the timer. I just want to enjoy the puzzling experience. I have a few notes here to refer to to make sure I mention a couple of things. One is the poster. I feel it really is too small. It's not usable to help you puzzle. I referred to the box, but unfortunately I couldn't get the sticker off the box. I tried and I was worried I was going to damage the box. So I did have to refer to the little poster for that upper corner, but that's just one thing. Now I feel the prongs are a bit sticky. The pieces are a bit sticky with one another in the sense that like if I lift this up, it stays perfectly together. But I have a feeling when I come to try to take it apart, yeah, you see, when I'm going to try to disassemble it, the pieces are kind of a bit stuck together. So I'm going to have to be careful. And I did notice, yeah, see, that's all kind of stuck. I did notice that some of the prongs were a bit bent. Not many, not like really damaged, just slightly bent. And I have noticed on some of my other larger piece jigsaw puzzles, meaning the pieces are larger than what, you know, a standard puzzle is that often you do find bent prongs. And I just wonder if that's the nature of having puzzles with larger pieces. So just something to note. It's a bit sticky, um, but no false fits. So like you could tell that two pieces did not go together, but if you tried to separate them, sometimes it kind of stuck. And I will have to take care when disassembling this jigsaw puzzle. I love the colors. I love the finish. I love the subject matter. Hopefully you enjoyed the voiceover. Now I went online and looked up Mud Puppy and I have a few notes from their website here. So they use non-toxic inks like in their puzzles and they do books and games, I believe. And they want to engage kids and promote learning without the use of digital screens and technology. So I do believe Mud Puppy is more of a company geared towards children products, which then emphasizes my give a bigger poster because then you could put this up in a school classroom or a library and it would be very colorful and bright and enjoyable. But at this size, I just, I just think it's kind of useless. And you know, if you're going to make a poster, make it usable. Um, Especially, don't make it smaller than the box. Just my opinion. Now, they are committed to making eco-friendly products. And for example, like their puzzles are made of 90% recyclable paper. So that's really nice. I went and I looked up a finished 1,000 piece mud puppy jigsaw puzzle. They had it on their website and I zoomed in. And it does look like they're all two-pronged standard pieces. The pieces do have a direction. Not the direction I thought. It feels like the the longer pieces go left to right and the wider pieces go up and down. Definitely from looking at the jigsaw puzzle, it felt like the pieces were directional. But now even as I'm looking at it, like 
It almost looks like all the pieces are the same, but they're not. They're not. So leave your comments below and let me know, have you done a mud puppy jigsaw puzzle? Are they all two prong standard pieces or do they have puzzles with a variety of piece shapes? I obviously have only done one and then that one that I saw online, so I'm not sure. But I did enjoy building it. It was lots of fun. I will take care in disassembling it. And yeah, that's my first Mud Puppy Jigsaw Puzzle. What do you think? Leave your comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. For the love of puzzles, I hope you enjoy my videos. Please consider subscribing. And until next time, ciao!